Hi, everybody. Our guest today is Chelsea Finn, currently a research scientist at Google Brain and a postdoc at Berkeley AI Research Lab. Chelsea will be joining the Stanford Computer Science faculty very soon, and she recently completed her PhD in computer science at UC Berkeley. Hi, Chelsea, and thank you for your time. Hi, great to be here. Chelsea, you develop robots that can learn just by observing and exploring the environment, something similar to what toddlers do. And your algorithms, from what we know, require far less data than is usually needed to train an AI. So I want you to tell us and our viewers uh, your experiences with Brett, the robot, uh, where he was, uh, where it was, and how far have we come along today? Absolutely. So I think that, I don't know, the, the, the types of things that I'm really excited about are not having a robot learn one very individual skill or one very specialized skill, but learning more general things about the world and hence being able to generalize to new situations and being able to very quickly learn new things by building upon that previous experience. So I guess, I think before I started my PhD, a lot of robot learning had been focused on, like, let's get the robot to like, uh, do one particular thing, uh, do one particular task, like put, put one object um, somewhere else, uh, specializing in particular ways. Whereas I think that kind of some of the advances and some of the things that we've been working on more recently is trying to get more broader notions of intelligence and broader notions of tasks and having robots be able to, uh, instead of just general, instead of just performing one task, trying to generalize. And the way that you do that is by learning about the world, by observing the world, by understanding the outcomes of your actions, as well as trying to predict what will happen in the future. Okay, so that's pretty much a uh, few shot learning, if you can call it that. Like, yeah. Right? So can you explain to us in a very simplistic way, what are those computational models that capture human learning abilities for a large class of simple visual concepts? Yeah. So. The kind of the key idea underlying few shot learning is that instead of training a machine learning system from scratch to recognize um, recognize objects, for example, maybe you, you train a, a, um, a machine from scratch to translate from French into English, and you collect a ton of data for that one particular task from translating to French to English. Kind of the key idea underlying few shot learning is instead of collecting a lot of data for one narrow task, collect a small amount of data for a large number of tasks. And if you can have the system understand this data and essentially learn how to adapt to new tasks and learn how to learn new tasks, then when it sees a new task or a new concept that it needs to learn, it can learn it very quickly with a small amount of data. You've spoken often about learning to learn. And this has been an influential co concept in cognitive science and machine learning, in fact, over the past several decades. It's not just recent. But how are you applying it today? Absolutely. So the existing techniques in, in cognitive science were building upon Bayesian models and did have the capability to perform this type of future learning. Uh, kind of the, the recent breakthroughs have been combining these types of models using like combining these types of ideas with advances in deep learning with large scale neural networks in order to be able to scale to raw image pixels so that you can recognize new objects and, um, and new images just from the raw pixels and uh, other techniques like that. So it's all about scalability and trying to scale these methods. I've seen Brett the Robot in action, um, some of the videos that you've shared. And it's all very exciting, Chelsea. But tell us, what is the real value of creating machine learning systems as generalists? Tell us, what are the real world applications? I can think of a few. But what are the, uh, who are the people who are most excited about this line of work? Right, so in typical applications of robotics, you have a robot that does one thing over and over again and specializes for that one particular thing. And if something goes wrong, the robot isn't able to adapt and isn't able to understand what happened and figure out what to do if something went wrong. Um, and so if you have a system that instead of like memorizing exactly what it needs to do, has a more general understanding of how the world works, then it should be able to adapt to these certain situations. And it's not just about adapting in one particular situation, but also adapting in many different situations and being able to handle the diversity of the real world. I think it will, by building systems that 
are more generalist and have a better understanding of the world, we'll actually be able to put robots into unstructured environments and environments that humans are in and be able to do things that are useful. Uh, existing systems aren't versatile enough in order to uh, enable robots in those environments. You know, Chelsea, in an ideal world, I would have liked to be t chatting with you with your robots you know, nearby. But since we're not, uh, let me just grab a bottle that I have right here on the table with me. So let's say I have this, OK? And I, this cap goes on this bottle. We know this. So what you're saying is, if we change the bottle or change the, the lid, the robot should be able to understand that it's not a match. Is that right? Exactly. So if you just train a, if you train a robot from scratch how to learn how to screw a cap onto a bottle, its entire, universe, it, its entire universe is that bottle and that bottle cap. And so if you give it another bottle or another cap, it, it will have no idea what to do because it's never seen anything else in its lifetime, per se. Uh, and so instead, like, if you want we, to kind of, by like, using these types of techniques that enable robots to be more general and understand broader principles about physics, about objects, about interaction, then they'll be able to better generalize to when given a new bottle or when given a new object that they've never seen before. They'll be able to understand what's going on and be able to do things that are useful. Tell me what success looks like in your field of work. Would it be uh, an ideal situation of putting a robot in any environment, maybe a disaster zone, and having the robot act intelligently enough without hurting anyone, let's say? Um, or haven't haven't uh, ever seen that environment before. Exactly. So I think that if we're capable of putting a robot in a room that it's never been in before, like a bedroom, or putting it in a disaster scenario that it's never been in before, or an office space, or a hospital that it's never seen before, and being able to be useful in those environments, even just doing kind of the basic sorts of things that humans can do, I think that would be a huge success. Um, these types of generalization capabilities are way beyond uh, the existing techniques we've seen. So what would be a good midway um, point of success? Right, so a lot of the work that I've done so far is uh, instead of putting the robot in an entirely different environment with all new objects and lighting and everything, just focusing on generalization to new objects that the robot hasn't seen before in the same environment. Um, so maybe give it a new bottle and have it try to screw that cap into that bottle or give it um, a set of plates and some silverware and have it set the table with, the, with that um, in an environment that it knows, but with objects that it's never seen before. Okay, we have a question on the bottle and the lid. So should the robot sense if the kid matched the bottle or if the lid is appropriate to the bottle? Right, so the robot should be able to tell if the lid, like be able to tell if the lid is appropriate for that bottle and it should be able to figure that out relatively quickly. That's something that a human can figure out pretty quickly if, if they're not a good match. I mean, even if they look very similar, you can at least try it and, and understand whether it's whether or not the system will fail at the task or not. What are the robots already out there which impress you in the market? So I think that the most robots on the market right now, I guess, so, for me, it's, it's all about the software. So, the, I mean, the hardware, the hardware is is, is well ahead yeah. of the software. Um, you can tell the operator robot to do remarkable things, and that's because you're using like the human is, is controlling the robot. Uh, and the kind of where things break down is where is when you need to program the brain of the robot itself to do things autonomously. So, um, I think like the hardware out there is is definitely good enough to make progress on the software side. I mean, there there are some things. That, that need more advances, like tactile sensing, for example, is way behind human tactile sensing. Uh, but I think that in terms of the software side of things, the, um, I guess there is a company that's looking at putting robots in hotels. And I think that that's uh, quite an interesting scenario because it is trying to move it's a scenario where you're trying to move away from the factory towards more unstructured environments, towards environments where there are humans, um, towards environments where uh, things might go wrong. You might uh, you might get out on the get out of the elevator on the wrong floor and not realize that you're on the wrong floor. And there's all these types of things that can go wrong that the robot has to be able to adapt to. Great. Thanks so much, Chelsea, for your time. Thank you. Great.
Yeah, my pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.